Okay, this video is going to take uh, well, five minutes or so to kind of talk about what this new Tektronix uh, MDO, Mixed Domain Oscilloscope, is all about. Basically, it is a four channel uh, analog, you know, digitizing oscilloscope. These channels will either be 500 megahertz or 1 gigahertz of bandwidth on all four channels. Uh, 16 digital channels, 20 meg of memory behind all of those uh, channels, but then also adding a either 3 or 6 gig spectrum analyzer to the box. Okay, so basically it has all the features that you typically expect to see of a mixed signal oscilloscope, you know, uh, adding all the channels, turning them off, but also now adding a spectrum analyzer to it. We had the hit the spectrum analyzer channel and it basically turns, splits the screen to a time domain and frequency domain. If we turn the analog channels off, we basically get just a spectrum analyzer. And it drives just like a, uh, you'd expect a spectrum analyzer to drive. We can uh, do your typical spectrum analyzer functions frequency, span, bandwidth, you know, resolution bandwidth, things like that. Very easy to kind of go show, you know, what uh, the spectrum analyzer can do. Some very interesting things uh, that your typical spectrum analyzer doesn't have. Things like a spectrogram, which allows you to look at how spectrums are changing over time. In this case, I've got this spectrum kind of wiggling around here a little bit over time. And if we look carefully at the spectrogram, we can actually see, you know, how we're just basically chart recording that into the spectrum analyzer display. But because this instrument is oscilloscope based, we do have the ability of showing additional um, RF capabilities versus time by looking at things like RF amplitude, frequency, or phase versus time. You can almost think of those as AM, FM, or PM demodulators. The signal we're looking at is a frequency modulated signal whose baseband is ramping back and forth slowly. So if I turn on a frequency versus time trace, the upper trace here becomes essentially frequency deviation versus time. Okay, so lots of uh, feature rich displays here looking at things in a number of different domains just on the RF channel. That's all I've got turned on right now. But really the power of this instrument is the ability of tying in data captured on the RF channel to uh, and have, capturing that data and tying it into both data captured on the analog channels as well as the digital channels all done simultaneously. So let's take a look at some of that capability. Okay, so uh, we'll switch the demo board over here and uh, go take a look at an uh, interesting uh, setup here. So I'm actually probing a number of different areas on this board. Okay, and uh, we'll take a look at this. I'm probing a couple of uh, uh, analog signals here, channel one and channel two on the scope. I'm probing some digital, digital lines over here with the digital probe. And I've also got the RF output being coupled into the spectrum analyzer input. And what we're simulating here is actually the behavior of a phase lock loop circuit. What we're doing is basically uh, captured a couple of channels along the top here. We can see I've actually channel one, uh, we're calling it a PLL enable. Uh, we're actually enabling this uh, the PLL circuit that's on here. The next voltage that's coming here on channel one. Uh, channel 2 uh, right here is the VCO tune voltage. What we're doing is commanding the PLL to tune to a new frequency and we're watching that happen. Uh, down just below that is a, a spy bus. We can actually see the spy bus there. And that, that's actually a serial command that's sent to the uh, PLL to tell it to tune to a new frequency. We've captured all those over time during this startup and tune behavior. Nothing's new with that, but the idea is we've also captured the RF activity at the same time. And the way we time correlate all this together is this spectrum that's shown right down here is being shown at this location right here where that little orange bar is. We call that the spectrum time. And by using the uh, navigator, uh, the um, wave inspector controls here, I can just move this pan control. And as I, if I move that, we can actually see how I can move that uh, spectrum time back and forth. So if I move it over to here where it was, I don't see anything in the spectrum because this is now lined up before the VCO was enabled. So if we move it after, now I can actually see the RF signal came up. And as I move it through in time, we can literally see how the spectrum of the RF signal is changing over time. So I've captured the complete seamless RF uh, history of the data going on in the RF spigot, as well as the analog channels and the digital channels, all time correlated here. And we do, of course, have the ability to zoom in like you do with uh, the DPO and MSO products. In fact, if we zoom right in, uh, right here where that uh, spy bus command is, we can actually see the decode of the spy bus right here. If we look carefully, I can see what I triggered on. It's actually a 203141 hex. In fact, if I hit the trigger button here, I can see I actually triggered on that data value, 203141 hex. 
was able to tie all that together. And I can zoom back and forth here as well and, uh, and see all this activity. If I look at some of those RF versus time traces, if we go back here and I add RF versus time and I turn on the amplitude versus time, the amplitude versus time trace just popped up right there. I'll just move the scale of that up a little bit. So now I can actually see the delay from the enable signal going to the PLL and that uh, uh, signal coming up. So that's really the idea of what the M MSO is all about or the MDO is all about being able to tie uh, analog, digital, and RF time domain all together in one instrument.